Am I wrong for telling my estranged sister and our parents that she and her kids are not my problem? Seven years ago, I was married and expecting a baby when things went horribly wrong. Around 10 weeks into my pregnancy, I suffered a miscarriage, and then I returned home to find my husband in bed with my sister. The two of them tried to apologize and convince me that we could all get over it. But I wanted nothing to do with either of them, and even less so, when I found out she had gotten pregnant. My divorce was finalized quickly because I wanted nothing from him other than the divorce and was willing to leave the marriage with nothing but the clothes on my back. Pretty early, I realized my parents were hoping I would want to still be part of the baby's life, but I wanted nothing to do with the baby my sister conceived while sleeping with my husband, now ex, as I lay in hospital losing my own pregnancy. I refused any and all contact with my sister and ex. They married and had two more children after the one she conceived during my marriage to him. I met my current husband when I had distanced myself from my whole family and he was amazing and his family were great. We got married two years ago and his family are nothing short of the best. I adore the nieces and nephews I have gained through my marriage to him and we spend a lot of time together. Around three months ago, my sister called me at work using my work phone and told me she needed me and could I please come to her. I hung up the phone and continued about my day. It was several hours later that I got a message from my parents saying I needed to be with my sister. A few days later, I got another call and was told that my sister had been pregnant. The baby passed away inside of her and she delivered a stillborn, all while my ex was out sleeping with someone else. My parents and sister expected me to rally around her and I didn't. Now that some time has passed and she lives with them, I have been inundated with them saying I should meet her kids, be there for them like I am my husband's nieces and nephews, and that I should reconcile with the family. My sister told me how sorry she was again and that she wanted us to make up. I told the three of them that she and her kids are not my problem and I still want nothing to do with them. My parents are furious and they say I need to forgive because whatever she did, she is now suffering worse than would ever be deserved and her kids are innocent and deserve an aunt. Am I in the wrong? Now for the top comments. Nope. Your sister fooled around and now she's finding out. I'm incredibly sorry that either of you had to go through any of that. Both the miscarriage or stillbirth and the cheating. But this is karma wrapped in a big freaking bow. I am not downplaying the horror of miscarriage or stillbirth, nor would I ever wish it upon anyone. It is one of the worst things a human can go through. My comment was more aimed at the cheating aspect and the fact that the two situations are so damn similar. Although I will add that I'm wondering what the hell kind of man sees his wife in hospital losing her baby and thinks it's the perfect time for a hookup. Not wrong. You don't need to forgive her. What she did is unforgivable. Tell your parents to tell her that she can deal with it like you did by going out and finding a decent man to make her life with if any will have her. But you're not letting her around you or your new family because you're not her husband Mart. Then tell your parents that if they don't respect your desire to have nothing to do with her and harangue you again, you will completely cut them out of your life for one year to be repeated as necessary. The kids are innocent, but under these circumstances, you have no family obligation to them. That's your sister's fault. Don't be mean to them if you come across them randomly in public of course, but you are fine with deciding any kind of relationship with them is off the table. I'm dying laughing at husband Mart. OP, tell your parents that you can't possible trust your sister around your new husband because there's no telling what she'd do to get another man. Lord knows how desperate she is that she has to sleep with, have children with, and marry your ex-husband, and didn't even have the decency to wait until you were done to go licking off your plate. Not in the wrong, and I wouldn't be talking to my parents either. If you guys suffered the same fate, how come you need to rally around her? When someone else did it to her and when you suffered, it was her that was doing it to you. Shaking my head. Worse than could ever be deserved, they say. I happen to think she got exactly what she deserved. She got exactly what she gave to you. Literally found herself in the exact same predicament, and the fact that she thinks she deserves your sympathy is almost comical. I honestly think you should cut communication with all three of them, your horrid sister and kind of even more so horrid parents. Of course you're not wrong. Don't question yourself for a minute. Continue to live your best life without the unnecessary baggage some might refer to as your family. Yes, literally the same situation, but a bit better actually because she actually didn't have to watch her own sister bet her husband. Next story. Am I wrong for not congratulating my ex on the birth of his baby? I 22 female was in a relationship with Kyle 25 male for over a year when Ella 23 female came into the picture. I am so very sure that there was no cheating going on. Kyle wasn't being secretive, he wasn't hiding anything, and none of our friends seemed to be lying to me. 
So I was very heartbroken when he broke up with me and was shocked when he got with Ella a few weeks later. Now, I'm a socially anxious introvert, so hiding from them and my friends was easy. I threw myself into work and my hobbies and did everything I could to avoid them, all due to the fact that Kyle and I share a friend group. Luckily, I had my best friend Jenna 21 female, by my side and 100% on my side. Fast forward a year, Kyle and Ella announced their pregnancy to the world, and seeing the Facebook post made me feel like I was being broken up with all over again. The baby was born last month, and whilst our friends have congratulated them and gone to see the baby, Jenna and I haven't. I understand that the baby is innocent, but I wouldn't be able to be in the same room as Kyle and Ella. Then Ella messaged me a few nights ago, telling me that I was a heartless witch for not being happy for them and that I should have at least congratulated Kyle. Jenna saw these messages and sent one of her own to Ella, basically saying that Ella has no right to demand anything from me after she ruined my relationship. Jenna has reassured me day after day that I didn't need to say anything to either of them, but it's been eating away at me. Am I wrong here? No. Ella is nuts. I can't imagine caring what my partner's ex thinks about my new baby. If I was her, I'd be annoyed if you contacted your ex, even to say congrats. It's a power trip. Haha, <laughs> I won. I have your man and a baby. Literally. This lady is so insecure as her relationship, that while dealing with a newborn, she's sitting there with OP taking up all the free real estate inside her head. Like how pathetic is that? She's mad that OP isn't thinking about her, the same amount that she's been stewing about OP. Something's to consider. Kyle is not a such a great prize. He dropped you in a heartbeat and moved on to Ella. While breakups are painful, he doesn't deserve to take up any more of your time or space in your mind and heart. Ella is probably a little threatened by you. However, she happened to end up with Kyle, maybe she'll feel validated, and looking for a congratulations from you is her way of seeking your blessing. You don't owe it to either of them. Ella is also stirring the pot a little, because there was no need for name calling. If you all were friends, then maybe she's the heartless bee as she put it, for not leveling with you first when she decided to get with Kyle. You don't owe Ella and Kyle anything, not even a congratulatory text. What's more, they don't deserve it. Don't let these two continue to negatively impact your well-being. Not in the wrong, if this is what I think it is. You don't owe your ex any time. However, it sounds like maybe Ella is closely related to you. Good friend or family member. Because in my opinion, if they aren't that close, I'm not sure there's any reason to have a connection with them on social media or phone contacts etc. None of my exes called or texted me when I had a kid, and I thought nothing of it. Multiple people messaged us when my husband and I got married and had our kid. It was incredibly bizarre. One of the women who messaged my husband wasn't even friends with us, yet went on and on about how she believed he had always had a crush on her and how she was so surprised he got married because of said crush. She legitimately expected him to pine for her alone for five-ish years rather than have any relationships. It was nuts. And that lady was married. I had multiple male friends ghost me the minute the marriage announcement went up. Nothing better than the realization that they were all just waiting in line for their turn. It was gross. Next story. Am I wrong for telling my mom she's dumb if she thinks I'll babysit for her? My mom and I 17 female have never had a good relationship. She was 20 when she had me, with a guy she slept with who she didn't like, which chased away the guy she did like, because he didn't want to be with someone who had a kid. So I was born, and mom had negative feelings for me, and we lived with my grandparents most of my childhood. When I was about 6, mom started to take more of an interest, because I think the idea of having a little girl to dress up and do makeovers with was fun to her. But I was never into makeup or clothes. I'm not the girl she wanted me to be, and mom lost interest after I refused to go around wearing these sparkly dresses that she'd find for me. When I was 13, we moved out of my grandparents and into a place together. Six months later, her now husband moved in. Two years later, she was pregnant and had a baby girl, who is now eight months old and she's expecting again. Mom has been so happy and has been such a different mother to her baby, and she's even excited to be having a boy now. A few weeks ago, she wanted me to babysit so she and her husband could have a date night. I told her I was busy. She told me I could be unbusy and help out in the family. I told her that wasn't going to happen. She said to see it as bonding time with my sister. I told her I didn't need any bonding time and I was going out so she better find someone else. She threatened to punish me. I asked her how. She stared at me for the longest time because she had no idea what would matter enough to me to take away. She ended up just paying a sitter. Then a few days later, she told me again that I would be babysitting. I told her my answer was the same as the previous time and that she could forget me ever babysitting. She was all, why the hell not? 
She told me I owed her and that I was making her wish she had left me at my grandparents. I told her she should have and then she wouldn't need to worry about her little family where she has one of each, which was what she said a couple of times after finding out she's having a boy this time. I told her she was dumb to think I'd help her or want to spend time with her kids when she has made it clear she never wanted to be my mom and that I was never enough for her. She got so mad that I called her dumb and told me I was the biggest regret she had and why the heck could I not realize I owed her. Her husband told me calling her dumb was cruel and that it's offensive to others. Am I the idiot? Now for the top comments. As a fellow unplanned child of a young mother, I feel you friend. I wanted to feel supported and loved too. To shake the projected feelings of regret. You don't get that by fighting fire with fire. You can't get clean water from a dirty well. You are not wrong. You are just a kid working through complex emotional needs and lacking a parent that can navigate those with you with any sense of emotional maturity. If your parent can't give you the support you need, reevaluate what your support network looks like and identify other figures in your life that can help. It's a terrifying process to branch out like that, but relying on a dysfunctional parent forever isn't going to lead to good places. I have my grandparents. They're the only people I actually rely on for support, but mom limited my access to them after we moved out because she had a fight with them and doesn't speak to them anymore. Reddit doctor here. I'm going to prescribe grandparent hugs once daily for the next six months or until symptoms improve. Seriously though, if you are almost 18, maybe start considering moving in with your grandparents as soon as you are legally able to. It doesn't sound like your relationship with your parent is likely to be resolved in short order, even with a good therapist involved. Thank you. That is my plan. I've got my sights set on my 18th birthday and the last time I could speak to my grandparents, I brought it up to them and they were good with the plan. You can probably go now. Courts often don't force 17-year-olds to follow the custody orders. My daughter 17 female had a physical fight with her dad earlier this year. It was the last straw for her, so she asked me to come get her. She's been living with me full-time since, though the custody order is 50-50. Her dad called the police and said I had kidnapped her. They told him to go pound sand. I'm so sorry you've grown up with that feeling from your mom that sucks. I'm used to it by now. But it means things can be awkward when she thinks I'll still try to win her love. Last story. Am I the idiot for telling my half-sister something her parents wouldn't? My 17 female parents divorced six years ago after my mom and I found out dad had been having an affair and got another woman pregnant. The woman is now dad's wife and she showed up at our door eight months pregnant at the time. As you can imagine, the divorce was not amicable or friendly in the slightest. My relationship with my dad also changed. I had been a real daddy's girl, but ever since, I don't feel the same about him. He destroyed my family, hurt my mom, betrayed me too, and left me to deal with my parents' divorce and a new baby coming into the picture in almost no time at all because three weeks after his now wife showed up at the door, my half-sister was born. My parents ended up sharing custody of me. I've always wished I had far less time with my dad. I don't like or trust him and his wife. I have grown fond of my now six-year-old half-sister and my four-year-old half-brother though. But I'm not super involved in their lives either, because that would mean more exposure and time with dad and his wife. So, I'm graduating in June 2023, and my half-sister has talked about how excited she is. She then started talking about family photos, and how our whole family would be in photos for the first time. I think she was trying to say family unit, but she's sick so probably doesn't get it. I told my dad he needed to explain that we have different families, and her idea of who will be there and what family photos will look like for me are different which includes her grandparents and her mom's brother, as well as her parents and brother. He said she wasn't wrong, and his wife and her family are part of my family unit also. I told him they were nothing to me. When he still wouldn't do it, I tried to get his wife to talk to her daughter, but that was a fail. So when she brought it up again, I explained that our families looked a little different, and how her grandparents and uncle were not my family. I explained I had my own family through my mom. She asked if her mom was my family, and I told her no, but that she and half-brother are, even if it is different between me and them than it was between the two of them. She got it. She asked if I wanted to have her family too because she'd share, but I told her I was good. When she wasn't bringing it up anymore, dad and his wife asked her about it, and she told them I explained it to her. Now they're saying I'm an idiot and that it wasn't my place. Not wrong, because you explain nicely without going into details that should not be told to a small child. Yep. Sounds like you handled it like a champ. Factual, plain, no acrimony. Yep. It sounds like OP really loves her little sister and is honestly the least likely to go throwing shade at other people while attempting to explain the dynamics of this family. 
There's no telling how dad and the affair partner, stepmom would have referred to OP's mom and additional extended family while trying to explain it. OP sounds like an awesome big sister. Not the idiot. You're very gracious towards her. I read so many posts here where kids simply hate their half-siblings for how they were born, so I'm happy to read one where they like each other. Your dad and his wife are though. What do they think that your sister will never notice? They don't need to confess their sins to her, but kids get before we were together, dad was married to another woman. But that didn't work, so we got married instead. That's why your sister has a different mom. Honestly, it sounds like part of refusing to explain it was them trying to use their poor sweetheart of a little girl to try and force OP to at least put on a show of accepting the affair partner and her family. So, this was honestly the kindest thing OP could do for her sister and herself, to explain it kindly and honestly, so they can't use her for that BS anymore. Six years is old enough to understand that there are different kinds of families. Had you gone into details about why your parents separated with a six-year-old, that would have been horrible behavior. But simply telling her that her mom's side of the family is not your family is fine, and your father and her mother should have told her.